you're joining us at home, you can download this worship booklet digitally and follow along, or you can join us on the Book of Common Prayer. So why don't we stand as we begin? Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. From time to time, I've actually um, been interviewed or featured in an article in the Houston Chronicle. And a few years back after one of those articles, I received a letter in the mail uh, with an offer to coat that article in acrylic and put it on a plaque to last for generations to come. And I actually saved that letter and I'm gonna read a little bit of that letter to you. This is the advertisement that came to me. First, take a look around your office. Now imagine how good looking this wall hanging will be once it's placed there. Second, think of all the nice comments your friends and clients and VIPs and family will make once they see it placed proudly on display. Many who may not have seen the article about you will be excited to see the evidence of your success enshrined in such an attractive form. The quality of workmanship and top grade materials really speak of class. And then third, I think there was more, but this is all I Save. Third, think of the possibilities your pu publicity could present you if properly leveraged. Uh, we will help you there as well by this plaque, and we will send you six keys to leveraging PR for huge name recognition and bigger market share. Wow. <laughs> I mean, all of this in a plaque for only $159. And by the way, it came with a 100% money back guarantee. If I had only known where to get all of these things, success and power and leveraging and publicity and the admiration of friends and family and VIPs, now a plaque like that, there's, there's power. I'm sure when I was a bit younger that an advertisement like this might have grabbed my attention a little bit more. It's very tempting to want to have admiration and success and VIPs for friends and power leveraging. But most of us know that as time marches on, it's sometimes hard to know what real power is or where to get it, and even if we get it, how we hold on to it. There is perhaps always been a lot of talk about power these days around the globe, witnessing battles for power, overthrow of power, exchange of power. Sometimes it's peaceful, often it is not, as is the case with Uganda this week. In our nation, there's plenty of publicity around just who are the powerful. The debate about, around who should be in power in Washington continues. There's a lot of fear and worry being poured into that debate about power. A lot of money, too. Some estimate that between November 3rd and January 5th, 
$1 billion will be poured into the two undecided Senate races to be held in the state of Georgia as our two leading political parties vie for power, one holding, uh, hoping to hold both houses of Congress and, and the other hoping just to hold on to the one they've got now. And we're living in a time right now when uh, the abuse of power rightly is being scrutinized in the church, in the business sector, in the entertainment industry, and in our political and legal systems. Power is an interesting quality. It's almost tangible. Usually uh, when we think we have power, we feel pretty good, we feel in control. When we're on the other end of it, we don't feel so good. That said, we're living through an interesting time that cultural sociologists call postmodern. Some are even saying it's post postmodern, meaning the, that many of the cultural narratives that promise some foothold on power, some sense of security and control, have actually failed or at the very least disappointed. If you haven't visited the Bush Library in College Station, I commend it to you for a lot of reasons, but one of the most striking poignant icons that offer a vision into a, another world is a large piece of the wall that separated East and West Germany, a visible reminder that fascism and communism did not hold the answers many once believed they did. Those who believe, and as we know, some do, socialism may hold the answer for humanity, have to admit the huge gaps that ideology leaves in an ordered society. And if we're honest, we have to confess, even capitalism has its flaws. The Industrial Revolution did great things, but left us with pollution. The nuclear age brought us far, but it's left us with the threat of annihilation. The European Union, or its Euro, it's certainly not the economic magic formula many thought they might be. All of these have still left humanity with an abiding sense of dis-ease dissatisfaction. The cyber age in which we're living increasingly seems to beg the question of whether we've gone too far. I don't know if any of you watched any of the congressional hearings on social media earlier this week. I watched a little bit of it, and to me, a startling moment was when CEO Jack Dorsey admitted that one of the primary engines that monitors, perhaps filters is a better word, what happens on Twitter is not a human or an editorial board, but algorithms put in place by computers. Much of our social media that our world is devouring is the fruit of artificial intelligence. If I can make a little editorial comment, on those few occasions I've read posts on Twitter, it's fairly easy to see that a lot of what passes for intelligence is artificial. It doesn't take a giant leap of thinking to observe that things that and people who seem to have power to give us an abiding sense of what we really want or need will eventually fail us time and time again. The Bible tells us power, real power, doesn't come from the inside out or from the outside in, not from the human side of the equation, but from another side. It says that real power, enduring power, is not something one can accomplish, but instead can only receive. This isn't new. It's old as creation itself. The great temptation in the Garden of Eden was not a Granny Smith apple. It was the enticing promise of Satan to our forebears, eat this, You'll be like God. What shook the foundation of ancient Rome's power structure, so much so that it eventually crumbled to dust. It wasn't that the followers of Jesus loved one another, cared for the poor, sought to live moral lives. In fact, many of the Roman authorities appreciated that. But what shook them into dust was that Christians would not pledge their allegiance to Caesar. And this tension between what the world held as powerful and what the first to follow Jesus held as powerful was something that required constant and consistent tension. And that's what we see unfolded for us 
in the epistle lesson today. Though Paul established the church in Ephesus in 52 AD during his second missionary journey, he would return and remain there for two or three years during his third missionary journey in the mid-50s. But it was 10 years later in 62 AD that he would write his letter to the Ephesian Christians. And so even after this long period of relationship, these 10 years, his enduring presence, he still felt it necessary to compel those Christians not to relinquish the health of their souls for the power offered in this world. So this is what we hear uh, in today's lesson from Paul, from the opening chapter, Paul writing, I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ may give you a spirit of wisdom as you come to know him so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What is that hope? What is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power. God put his power to work in Christ and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places far above all rule and authority and power and dominion. Now, Paul could be a little bit wordy at times, kind of like your rector. But here's the paraphrase. If you're looking for power, power to live in this life, to endure this life, to make it through this life, it is found in Jesus Christ. This is Christ the King Sunday. It's the last Sunday of the church here that falls just before the first Sunday of Advent when we begin the beginning point of the story of Jesus, the one that we call the King of Kings. So the question for you and for me, to kind of play with today, to think on, to ponder, is on this Christ the King Sunday, is in what or in whom do we entrust our lives? Who or what gives us the power to live our lives? So we can debate this a little bit, but not here. But if we can agree that there's no perfect ism if we can agree that there's no perfect politician or leader, if we can agree that there is nothing on the inside that can bring us the enduring gifts we need, real gifts, things like forgiveness and mercy and grace and hope and faith, things that can only be received and not achieved, if we can admit this, then can we also have the humility to confess what Paul tells us? that the power we crave, the power we need, comes only from one place, only from one person, Jesus Christ. The point, the goal, if you will, of this Sunday is to get us to name Christ who Christ is, King of creation. And if he's to be your king and my king, then we are to be his subjects. Now, you and I don't talk much about kings and queens in our world. Maybe we, we talk more about bosses, people in authority over us. My mentor, the late John Stott, and I had a long conversation almost 30 years ago that has stuck with me to this day. John was, as some of you know, he was an Anglican priest, a scholarly theologian, worldwide missionary, and speaker, and I think arguably one of the most important voices uh, for our faith in the last century. But he had this wonderful way of making crucial points with just a few words. And one afternoon, I was interviewing John for a magazine article. If you want to go back 30 years, you can, you can Google that, I think. And I asked John as part of that interview, I said, of all the things facing the church and Christians today, what's the most important thing? What do you think is the most important thing? And he said, without hesitation, the real question before the church today is who is the boss? Not sexuality or liturgy or political activism or trendy education programs or even outreach initiatives, but who is the boss? And he went on to say, either Jesus is Lord or not. 
And if he is, then he must be Lord over everything, everything, or he's not Lord at all. Of course, that doesn't just apply to the church. It applies to you and me today. You and I who claim to follow Christ. If Jesus is Lord, if Jesus is boss, is king, then there can be no room at all for competing monarchs. Is Jesus, is Jesus your king? Or is there something else? Or is there someone else who has taken his proper place on that throne in your heart? Let it come to mind. It's so tempting to, to hold on to those things, those, those trophies, those plaques, those ideologies, those earthly power brokers, the whatever, and believe that's where, that's where real power exists, but it doesn't. Not real power. The only real power is in losing everything, every other competing king, all those kings of our making, losing them all, losing them all to Christ. The great English Methodist preacher, William Booth, died in 1912, wrote, the greatness of a man's or woman's power is in the measure of his or her surrender. The greatness is in the surrender to the power of Christ. There is one power greater than all other powers and that is Jesus Christ. I don't know if you're a checker player. Uh, I'm, I play, used to play with my kids. I'm, I'm horrible, I used to lose all the time. But if you know the game, the only way to, to win back the pieces that you've lost is to get all the way to the opposite side of the board, and at that point, you say what? You say, king me. And your opponent gives you back what you lost. And now, actually, you have the power to move in any direction you want. One of the real joys from knowing who your boss is is also giving over your power to him or her. Our story your story, my story, tells us that when we, when we turn our lives over to Jesus Christ, we get something that only he can give. It's only when you lose yourself to Jesus that you find you can live with a kind of freedom that you never before had. And that, my friends, is peace. And that peace from Jesus is the only power that endures. I want to kind of wind this down by suggesting to you that that peace manifests itself in two primary ways in our daily lives. The first is that peace comes from living life as you were intended to live it. I shared with you before um, from this pulpit many years ago now, but it was about 20 years ago that my wife Laura and I were leading a group of about 30 adults on a tour through the United Kingdom, through places in England. And as with many tour groups, after traveling, people tend to get a bit punchy and grumpy. But we, one day we arrived at Windsor Castle, and someone in our group noticed that the royal flag was hoisted up over the castle, which meant somebody from the royal family was actually in the residence, right? So suddenly the behavior of the group changed people began to kind of stand up a bit straight. They began to speak in kind of whispers. They began to act nice to each other. People were kind of dusting off their clothes, straightening their ties. One person swears that as she was coming out of the ladies' restroom, she saw the queen stop on her way down the stairs of a turret and pause and offer a little royal wave. I don't think so, but... But the point is, however, when the monarch was in the house, everybody's behavior changed. When Christ comes to dwell in us, when the king of creation is in his rightful place, we too become the people we were created to be. 
we're given power to be who Christ wants us to be. And with the knowledge of living with that power comes peace. But a second, I think much more powerful manifestation of that peace comes not from being just who Christ calls us to be, but from knowing that Christ actually dwells within us. And that, my friend, that delights our Heavenly Father. Some of you will remember a news story that was making the rounds 10 years ago. It was the winter of 2010, and a young girl from Coppell, Texas, died in a skiing accident in Colorado. Her name was Taylor Storch. and Her parents sacrificially made the decision to designate their daughter as an organ donor. Patricia Winters, an Arizona mother of two, received Taylor's heart. Sometime after the accident, Taylor's mother and father, Tara and Todd, set out to find the mother. You see, in their sacrifice, in their sacrifice, they wanted to hear their daughter's heartbeat once again. So they traveled from Texas to Arizona, and with Patricia's permission, they put a stethoscope to the chest of the one who had received their daughter's heart, and they heard it. Beat, beat, beat. And even in their pain, it brought them great delight to know that another lived because of their sacrifice. God sacrificed his very own son so that you and I might have the opportunity to have his heart beat within us. But that cannot happen unless we allow Christ to be king of all that we are. But if we do, if we do, friends, as God Almighty hears our heartbeat, he hears not ours alone, but the very heart of his Son our Savior, beating within our own chest, and that brings God's heart great delight. And there is peace in that delight. And that kind of peace is the only power that really matters. May the peace of Christ rule in your hearts. Paul once wrote to the church in Colossae, the peace of Christ rule rule in your heart. The two-pronged peace. Peace in knowing that you're living as God calls you to live and peace in knowing that God takes great delight in hearing the beat of his son's heart within you. That's the power that matters. The only power that's stronger than wealth or success or notoriety, any kingdom or ruler or political structure. It's the only power worth knowing. And it only comes when you're willing to lose every other rival to the throne of your heart. How to get there? Lose. Lose it all. And then with great abandon, open your arms and your life and your heart and and say with all that you are, say, king me. King me. King me. And then begin to just wander joyfully and peacefully over the board, playing board that is your life. Living as Christ means for you to live a life of the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. Amen. As we reflect on Russ's words to us, in humility we declare our faith together using the words of the Nicene Creed. 
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. On the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father, and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The congregation is invited to kneel as we begin uh, our prayers on page 13 of the service booklet. Father, we pray for thy holy Catholic Church. Grant that every member of the church may truly and humbly serve thee. We pray for our Anglican communion, for the Archbishop of Canterbury, Justin, for our presiding Bishop, Michael, for our bishops, Andy, Jeff, Kay, and Hector, for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world. There may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do thy will in all that we undertake, that our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, that they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise thee for thy saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in thy heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For Donald, our president, Joe, our president-elect, Greg, our governor, Sylvester, our mayor, and the Congress and the courts. For all who serve in our armed forces and their families, we pray for peace throughout the world, and especially in the Middle East. And we pray for the victims of terror attacks. And we remember before you and pray for the protection of our Christians' brothers and sisters who face danger or persecution for their faith. And we pray for victims of all natural disasters, especially those impacted by Hurricane Iota. We pray for the safety of all law enforcement agents, firefighters, paramedics, and all first responders who provide security and protection to the citizens they serve. We continue to pray for the many people who have contracted the coronavirus, for those in isolation, for those who have lost their job or their business, and for all those in our communities involved in ministering to the sick especially for all healthcare workers. And we pray for those in the hospitals, Charlie Raymond, Joe Bailey Jr., Agnes Perkins, Vereen Woodward, John. And for those whom our prayers have been requested, John, Katie, Rick Noble, Thomas, Frank Davis, Nancy Corkle, Tim Ellis, 
Ahmad in Tehran, Beth Costa, Max and East, Millie, Jeff, Jane Hendricks, Wanda Dodds, Emily Head, Luke and Bill. And for those on our continuing prayer list, and for all the blessings of this life, especially those remembered today with altar flowers, in thanksgiving for the baptism of Palmer Jean Flatten. And we remember before you the departed, especially Ed Randall, Mike Halverson, Tom Hall, Ann Bloxham, Ted Hayward. We give thanks for their lives and pray for their loved ones left behind. I invite your own prayers and intercessions. Lord, hear the prayers of thy people, and what we have asked faithfully, grant that we may obtain effectually, to the glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in thy will and walk in thy ways to the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our heavenly Father, who art this great mercy, have promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Well, it is good to see all of you here. Um, a warm welcome to those of you worshiping with us. Of course, those many of you worshiping with us virtually. Um, from time to time, I continue to run into people in the community who say to me, when are you gonna reopen? So I wanna say, we're open, open for business, uh, open for worship, and uh, increasingly open in different ways around our campus. I'll say a word about that as I unfold, but. A quick reminder that we do ask you to make reservations if you're coming to this service. Uh, we do ask, this is, this is the, the, the curve has gone down a little bit, but when we first started this, we had a number of no-shows, and so if, you're, if you make a reservation and you decide uh, that you can't be with us on Sunday, please let us know, because you actually, if you don't show, you, um, you've taken somebody's spot who could be here. Uh, but as soon as we have a consistent filling of this service, which we're almost there. If you look around today, uh, some in the balcony, um, then we're gonna add another service, and that's why it's so important that you pay attention to your, your uh, emails from us, because um, as I shared, we, we started the family table service back today uh, live, and we had families across the way in Bagby Parish Hall, and I shared with that group over there. Just this week, I had a woman we were in a, a meeting about something and, and somebody asked her, well, if you were to look at your crystal ball about the next six months and how would you, she said, I don't have a crystal ball. I have one of those eight balls that I shake and every time a different answer comes to the top. So that's kind of where we are. Uh, our management technique is how are we gonna get through this week? Let's see what, what pops up. But we do wanna open up more. So we do have the family table is now live. 9.15 on Sunday mornings for those who, that family-friendly, child-friendly service. We have nursery care for that service to make reservations for all of these. 
There's the altar service that continues to meet uh, on Zoom on Sunday. We're having Monday through Thursday Compline services that you can dial into on Zoom at 8 p.m., Monday through Thursday. Um, again, right after this service, actually Sunday mornings, Christian Education, an ongoing series for adults on the Ten Commandments. There's an Alpha course being offered virtually, uh, uh, kind of Christian basics for the family. There's a children's Sunday school program that's being offered on our website. I just finished up a 10-week ten ten series called Growing in Grace, uh, 10 lectures um, over 10 weeks. There's a study guide that goes with that. Even though that I've just finished with that, it remains on our website. So if you haven't picked it up, you want to pick it up, uh, you can do that at any time. Those lectures are now on, uh, on our website. If you have trouble sleeping at night, that might be where you want to tune in. So, um, um, I do want to say that a lot, growing numbers of people are, are finding a church with us. And so we actually had a, a new members class last week, and 24 adults joined St. Martin's last week. Uh, we would have normally welcomed them in our worship time. Uh, but if you're in that virtual world or you're visiting with us today and you want to know more about St. Martin's, let us know. Call in. There's a link on our website, and we'll begin to get you in that process of, of knowing what it be, means to be a a member here, and how to join St. Martin's. Um, we are going to have a Thanksgiving service this week. Uh, it will be uh, in person at 10 a.m., uh, and so if you'd like to come to that service, please make a, a reservation. Now, I'm not, if you, as you see, those of you who are looking online and those of you who are uh, holding a bulletin, you see there are lots of things in there, so I'm not going to go through all those things. It's hard to believe that the Advent season is upon us starting next Sunday. Uh, you'll see in there a toy drive. You'll see the upcoming open healing uh, uh, um, service where we're going to focus on kind of the blue Christmas. If those of you who remember uh, that opportunity to come together virtually and pray for one another, especially those who, for whom Christmas is not the best time of year. Uh, there is an Advent quiet day coming up. There are outreach opportunities in there, ways to give beyond yourself, and in particular, I would lift up not this week, but next week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, from 9 a.m. to 3 p.m., we're going to have a blood drive here at St. Martin's. Laura and I will come and, and give a little, and I encourage you to do so, um, and actually you get a free antibody test as part of the uh, giving your blood away. Um, but you do have to register, do have to make reservations for that online as well. Our gift shop is open. And it looks a little bit like an Advent Wonderland over there. Uh, and we're opening up the cafe again. But it's just for drive through just for pickup service. These are things that we're, we're looking at almost every day as we look, kind of not just the remaining weeks of this year, but as we look into January. How can we be more and more the St. Martins that we were before all of this uh, difficult season began? Lots of you are asking, what about Christmas Eve? And the word is, we will have Christmas Eve services with an S, live, and also a virtual service as well. Um, but again, stay tuned, because we're trying to figure out how to best do that with several services kind of back to back. How do you sanitize and keep things clean and safe in between services? But yes, there will be uh, services on Christmas Eve. Um, I do want to say um, that we're in that season uh, when we're asking you to seriously think about what you're able to give to the ministries of St. Martin's through an annual pledge uh, to St. Martin's. And so if you've yet to complete your pledge, you can do so online. You should have a packet at home. Uh, take some time to pray over that decision. Please let us know those decisions about how we'll live into 2021 uh, will be based upon your generosity uh, and I will say to you that um, it's really important that we get to know that this time of year and not into next year. Um, so if you can go ahead and make that decision, let us know, then we'll be able to plan. We have a lot of wonderful things planned for 2021, and particularly if we come to a season where we have a vaccine and life comes back to normal. As you see around our campus, we're going to have a lot of space and a lot of programming uh, offered in the way of worship, discipleship, and outreach, and uh, we need your support to help those things continue. Word about communion, if you've not been to this service yet, personally, uh, we'll have the communion service in just a moment, gather around our Lord's table. Those of you in the balcony, I think we're gonna deliver to you. Those of you who are here in the main part of the worship space as you come forward, give a little distance between uh, you know, those around you. Uh, you'll see we have um, sanitizers. We actually just do a quick 
step up under there. Um, I'll be here. Jane will be in, in front of the font. You'll receive just the bread. We're not, we're not offering wine at this time. Uh, and as you receive, you can either pull your mask down, put it on, uh, put, eat your bread then, or take it back and eat it with you in the pew if you wish. Um, and then we do ask you to, uh, as you leave, again, to kind of observe that social distancing. The clergy will be here, but we won't greet you at the doors. Hard as all that is, but we're, we're hoping and praying for a day when all that comes uh, to a close. All right, I'm going to say one more thing. I've talked a lot anyway, but you're here. So I, I used this example, uh, I think, last year in a sermon, but I think it works for Christ the King Sunday as well. And you need to know that when, when preachers are preaching, we often are preaching to ourselves. So when I talk about Christ the King Sunday, you need to know it's something I wrestle with in my own life, in my own faith. Uh, I have to turn back to Christ again and again and get him to king me again and again. A lot of us live life as if we have a little corporation on the inside and we have a board of directors and we give equal voice to everybody sitting on the board. So there's a voice there that has to do with my bank account and there's a voice there that has to do with my um, my family. And there's a voice, there's the worry voice. That's a loud voice. There's the fear voice. There's the power struggle. How many, I, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hands as I did earlier. I wonder how many of you have a power struggle going on in your home between you and your spouse right now over something so silly. Or a power struggle with one of your children. There's the, there's the bank account voice. There's the sexuality voice, and there's the leisure time voice, and there's the golf voice, hunting voice, all those voices. And, and unfortunately, a lot of us give Jesus, we give him a chair at the table, but he just gets one chair. So he's like one voice in that room in our heart of competing voices. So the way the Christian's supposed to live is to fire all those voices. Remove them from the board and make Jesus chairman of the board. And he's the voice that you turn to. He's the one that runs your day-to-day -day life. So as you come forward to receive communion, or if you receive it there, I tell you, a lot of times I tell you, do things with your hands, I tell you to wash your hands. Maybe kind of even in your mind, or if you want to with your hands, just kind of fire the voices competing for the lordship of Christ in your life. Fire them. And then put your hands out like this and let Jesus be chairman of the board. Let Jesus be your king, your savior, your lord. There's power in that power in that, I promise.
Lord be with you. With your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Because in Jesus Christ our Lord, thou hast received us as thy sons and daughters, made us citizens of thy kingdom, and given us the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, to thee, O Lord our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that, his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this, as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and with thy word and Holy Spirit to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And also that we and thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him, through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. together. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son the blessed company of all faithful people, and also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly receive thee, O heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. So may the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you and all those whom you love and pray for this day and evermore. Amen. Serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God.